Darren Till is pushing for a fight against Jake Paul. Darren posted a fight poster yesterday, and today he posted this, showing that he DM'd Jake and was left on red. Fans do not seem to be interested in this fight whatsoever, and roasted Darren in the comments. And to read off the top comments, bro getting left on red by Jake Paul. The fall off need to be studied. Former UFC contender begging for attention from a YouTuber. Ah, Darren, please stop, man, this is sad. Why would you post this? It's super sad watching fighters move past their prime and have to resort to Jake Paul. It's almost like watching washed up artists make a Christmas album. Going from being in the UFC to being buzzing off Jake Paul blanking you and getting embarrassing now at this stage clout chasing. Just fight somebody, anybody. Rampage Jackson is not a big fan of Sean Strickland's fighting style. Referring to when Sean started throwing wild kicks at Paulo Costa at the very end of their fight, Rampage thinks Sean should do that more often. Well, listen, I think, I think he should have been doing that you know, since round one, he really, been, yeah, especially the flying the kick, yes, all that stuff. Listen, even <laughs> no, that was nothing, it, dude. It was because the fight was the so flying boring. Kick was just the same as a stupid punch. I know, but still, it's everything exciting. looks. I why can't, not do I can't, it? The things I want to say, I can't say. Well, why I wouldn't do it in the beginning is because it's very dangerous. Yeah, but you can do it the last. You can do it. <laughs> it's like, like I'm not gonna stick him out there and just like do jumping kicks and get knocked the f out. Well, you can do it like the last like ten. That's what he did. He did the last ten seconds of each round. Oh, oh, you wanted one per round. Yeah, why not? So you're going to fly a five line listen, leg kick. You, listen, you I want to see you do that kick. I, hey, listen. I want to see you that's do not that my, kick. That's not my style, but hey, but, but guess what, though? When I when I fought um, the Smelly guy, what's his name? Um, sub, you know it's a boring fight when you out there. You know it's a boring fight. Why you fight? Like, man, this fight's kind of boring. Like, this guy's not fighting me right. He was trying to wrestle me the whole time. So, yeah, at the end of the round, I did like a like a flying knee. But it was like at the end of the first round, something like that. I still got a picture. It was a dope picture. I missed it. But <laughs> it's I threw a sick it. picture though. Yeah, it's a sick picture. I threw it, but that's not my style, dude. Flying kicks and stuff. But if you can do that stuff, do it at the end of the rounds to make it a little bit more exciting. Then I went ahead had to say. So a fan went and got a Sean Strickland tattoo. Sean reacted to the tattoo. He commented saying, my man, bro, we got to link up after a tat like that. Where do you live? Jamal Hill also commented. He wrote at Sean Strickland, bro, careful. I had a fan do this and he turned into a straight weirdo on some extra shit. Henry Cejudo calls Sean Strickland's victory over Paulo Costa a snooze fest. Henry said, this fight disappointed a lot of people. I wasn't expecting that. They were just too friendly, man. It's almost better to have a little bit of animosity. They were just trying to be homies, trying to be friends. There's too much respect in there inside the cage. Because nobody wanted to necessarily lose to each other, because they're both trolls, but the fight just ended up, the last 17 seconds of that fight is what gave the roar. But other than that, the fight was a snooze fest. I don't know how else to say it. Sean O'Malley and Tim Welch do not believe Dustin Poirier will retire. Old first Dustin at 55, that's sweet. I'd watch that. Yeah, I just, I feel like Dustin's probably not gonna call it good. He no, hell no. Gonna ask you that. I don't think so. I think he's gonna have six months off and then just get the itch. What the f else are you gonna do? I mean, he's healthy. healthy. Yeah. He just look like that his family? Long. Yeah, but for 24 hours straight, all day, every day? <laughs> yeah. Like, Train is part of, I mean, he's probably gonna continue to train regardless. Yeah. It's like, might as well train for something. Dustin Poirier gets a hero's welcome in his hometown, Lafayette, Louisiana. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I appreciate it so much, man. It means the world to me. You know? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love you, man. On the Jackson podcast, Rashad Evans details the origins of his beef with John Jones. Rashad and John used to be close friends and training partners back in the day. They ended up fighting each other in 2012, and during the buildup, the two had major bad blood. John ended up winning via unanimous decision. He got offered a fight after he fought, um, I believe it was, uh, not Matt, Matt Hamill or something like that, or, or it may have been, yeah, I think it was Matt Hamill. After he fought Matt Hamill, he got offered that fight, and they were like, because he smashed him up so fast, 
and uh, they were like, you know, he's right in position for a title shot. And I was like, okay, cool. Because at the time, we were we were on the same management team. Mm. You know, Malky Kawa had joined up with Glenn Robinson, and uh, you know, we were on the same management team. So I'm like, all right, cool. And it, the problem didn't come with me and John until like afterwards. I'm hearing like he's talking about he he would fight me, mm. and I'm like. Bro, this ain't this ain't how it's supposed to go. So I call him one time and I'm just like, yo, uh, you know, I hear you talking talking about you, you want to fight me and whatnot. And he's just like, nah, you know what, you know, hey, it's whatever. And I'm just like, yeah. And I'm like, what you mean it's whatever? He's like, yo, I mean, if you know, we gotta fight, we gotta fight. And I'm like, mother what? He said, yeah, we gotta fight. You know, we just gonna fight. And I was like, all right, that that's how it is. He's like, yep, that's how it is. And I was like, cool. After Islam Makachev defeated Dustin Poirier over the weekend, Dana White at the post-fight press conference said that John Jones is still pound for pound number one over Islam. Islam posted this photo to his Instagram story today, showing who him and John Jones have beaten since 2021. As you can see, Islam has Drew Dober, Tiago Moises, Dan Hooker, Bobby Green, Charles Oliveira, Alexander Volkanovsky twice, and Dustin Poirier. And John Jones just has Cyril gone. Islam wrote, sorry. Alex Bejeda responded to Jamal Hill's lengthy Instagram post yesterday. If you missed it, Jamal posted this, and Israel Adesanya liked it, by the way. In the caption, he wrote, Now, I haven't really spoke on this, but I went to Brazil and dog-walked your guy in one of the most one-sided ass whoopings in championship history, and after showed nothing but respect and paid homage. I've never celebrated over an opponent I beat. I even called out my fans for disrespecting Johnny Walker after I slept him. But because I showed competitive fire and was excited to be back after an injury that could have ended my career, y'all think this was funny or cool. At Alex Pajeda, you really set up a punch that you couldn't get to without a weird confusing moment and did some weak sh but it's okay because you will fight me again and my eyes won't leave you until you're as stiff as Izzy left you in Miami. Alex left a comment. He wrote, you reap what you sow. Shama. Jamal responded, yeah, remember that next time you across from me. I don't think y'all understand. You do realize if you get knocked out, choked out, or I snap something of yours, you get nothing, right? Y'all do understand this, right? You, if everybody's talking about I'm acting like I'm just giving away 20K for you to try to show up and just get... No, you 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 going to have to do something, bro. <laughs> y'all weird. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one says, imagine if Alex pulled up to Jamal's gym for that 20K. Shama. The second one's from MacDaddy3232. Says, Jamal Hill is always about something. And the final one from John O. Harper. Says, Hill's lack of self-awareness is Ronda Rousey level delusional. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.